Hi everybody, it's Matt here with pianoblog.com. I hope you're doing great. And today I want to talk about one of the biggest errors I see in terms of working on sound quality at the piano. Uh, I got thinking about this because now that students are returning, some students are returning to in-person uh, in lessons, I'm noticing a lot of people are having trouble adjusting back to an action on a piano different than the piano that they're practicing at home. So for example, students who have been practicing on an upright piano that maybe has a lighter action, uh, when they come back to, for example, this piano, which has a slightly heavier action, they have a lot of trouble adjusting and uh, controlling their sound quality with that heavier, kind of more substantial action. So that got me thinking a lot about sound quality and how you can learn to control sound quality at the piano. Now those of you who have taken my Fundamentals of Piano Technique course or some of my other lessons know I have a lot of exercises there about key depression, about relaxing the wrist and things like that. And if you're interested, I've linked to some of those free lessons uh, below this video so you can check those out. But I want to talk about one error uh, in specifically uh, in this video, and that is that a lot of people, when they're thinking about sound quality at the piano, they don't actually concentrate uh, on one chord at a time or one note at a time. They sort of think maybe a little too generally. Now that works if you're really used to adapting to a piano, but if you're really at a stage where you're trying to uh, just work on your sound quality or you're new to a piece and you want to think about voicing and controlling uh, particular chords or, or particular kind of color at the piano, it's very helpful to get in the habit of fixating on really one chord at a time. So I pulled a piece out sort of at random. I, I have a student working on this right now. Um, I think I may be the only person in the world who hasn't played this piece. This is the Chopin uh, E major um, etude, the opus 10 number three. Um, but uh, just this is a good example. So if I'm working on this, you'll hear a lot of times if someone's not used to a heavier action, they might play it something like... If they're trying to play soft, They'll, they'll, so everything kind of sounds weak, or they'll go in the other direction and everything will just be kind of the same. So you'll get kind of... And the problem is here, well, there's, a, there's several problems here. The, the first problem is just, of course, maybe they're not listening to themselves and maybe they don't have a, a, a sound picture, an image of the sound that they want in their head. So they, they're not, not really comparing the sound to anything in particular. But Another problem is that even if they might have that image in their head, they may be trying a little bit too quickly to replicate what they want to produce. And so, for example, this piece is great because it has a lot of kind of thicker harmonies, um, but at the same time, you're trying to kind of control every voice. So uh, I, if I were working on this, would be doing a lot of... one note at a time and, and you can even get into details let me see for example you can even start to think about okay do I want more of this do I want a little bit less of that kind of on one chord at a time and especially if you're at the stage where you're really kind of learning to control sound I used to sit for hours just with one chord and I, I still do this sometimes if it's something I feel like I, I don't have control over the sound and just and you'll find there are some chords okay for example um, What's one that's difficult for me because my, my hand's a little smaller? So for example, this chord, um, for 
for me, it's, you know, I have a slightly smaller pinky, so I have to, to really work to make sure I'm getting the voicing I want there. And then I would think, okay, how much E, you know, really I'm trying to listen to the colors in the chord. How much E do I want? And then after I've kind of sat on the chord, sat one, one thing at a time, I, I can kind of start to put it together a little bit. So it's a little more... Um, There, for example, I didn't like that I let go of the B in the left hand. But you get the idea. I'm working really slow here, and I'm, I'm kind of sitting on one thing at a time and making sure that I, I'm getting exactly the sound I want. And of course, it's, it's a process that you, you don't do it all at once. It's a cyclical process, right? So you kind of will have a sound in your head. You'll go one thing at a time, try and replicate that, and then uh, maybe you'll listen some more and realize, oh, that didn't sound the way that I wanted it to sound or how I thought it sounded, and you can go back. But this is sort of how I work on sound quality. And so if you're in the habit of just starting at the beginning and going all the way to the end or playing several lines, and you find that you, you just are not quite getting the sound that you want out of the piano, you might try this kind of work where you're literally even just kind of Okay, do I want some more G sharp? You get the idea. Like you, you really playing around with with controlling uh, the keys, how how much gradation of the key descent that you can feel, um, and, and working with that aural image. When I was in high school, I had a fantastic teacher named Lee Mitchell, uh, and I I remember distinctly I was about to play a, a recital, and he sat down to try the piano out. And um, he played a bit of Chopin, a couple lines of, of, of Chopin. And I'll never forget just hearing that and, and thinking, that sounded like a completely different piano than the one I'm playing. And I really couldn't quite understand how he was getting that sound, that color out of the piano. And it took me a long time, I think, uh, you know, all the way through grad school before I really started to realize what it was to, to work with the piano to really get the sound quality, a, a good sound out of a piano. Now, I'm not saying that I'm you know, the best at it or, or that I have an amazing sound now. It's, it's always a work in progress, right? But, but just kind of thinking it in specifics like that and trying to work with, with real detail, you know, without kind of driving yourself crazy and, and without kind of losing sight of the bigger picture, sometimes can really pay off if you can find that concentration and self-control to do it. So I hope you find this helpful. Uh, if you do like this stuff, please like and subscribe. You can like below the video, uh, like, uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, click the bell icon. And also feel free to leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you, love to hear questions because I do include those in future videos. And I have pasted uh, some links below this video to free beginner piano lessons and also free piano technique lessons that you'll probably enjoy. So that's it for today. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.